Welcome to a very special episode of Legends Loud. I am Rio Ferdinand, one yeah. of your hosts, and this is... I'm Roman Kemp, uh, and today in the hot seat, we have one of the all-time greats in women's football. Uh, an astonishing 63 goals in an incredible 111 appearances for Germany. Dominated the field, even more remarkable, she achieved all this before retiring at the tender age of 27. A two-time women's Euro champion and the proud ambassador for UEFA Euro 2024. Please welcome the phenomenal Celia Sasic. Hello. Welcome. So, yeah, 111 appearances for Germany. A silly amount. They've got 63 goals yes. in your time there. But the most important thing, two titles. Yes. Two Euros titles. Two of yeah, these. It's a different trophy. It's yeah. a different it's the trophy. Same feeling. But same it's, the same, <laughs> it's the same feeling. I mean, how does it differ from, you know, from, from representing a club? I mean, how passionate was it for you, for your country to, to win something like that? Oh, it's something special to play for your country because you represent your whole country. Yeah. All people are watching you and saying like, those girls are representing us in the in this tournament and they're representing what we are. So it's a, a very special and it's a, it's a proud moment to, to wear the jersey, to wear the dress from the national team and then to win titles is, is the best. Yeah. What's, what was it like when you were... Uh... When does it does that did that change your life? We've I've spoken to a few people that have won this and they say kind of it's so different to winning things with the club, but it's almost life changing. Was it the same for you? Um, uh, maybe not in the same way like this for male players because at the time where I played, women's football wasn't that great like it is now, and it wasn't the visibility was not so high uh, like it is now. Uh, but in some kind of way, the people realized that you mm. did something for everyone that you uh that you're part of the uh of the community of the, of the yeah of the german community and that you uh won the title for us it's mm. not for you or for mm -hmm. the other player you won the title for your country and i think that makes it uh quite special and uh, i enjoyed it very much well, well, i was reading up on you and interestingly you've, you've achieved so much but you retired so early what tell us explain what the reasons for that well uh on my first uh uh, appearance in the national team in the A national team was when I was 16 so I was quite young and uh, uh, I started very early and uh, at times where women's football wasn't as professional as, as it is now so it was like uh, three four times a week training and then it changed it become more and more professional uh, we trained two, two times a day and everything changed and uh, well after 10 11 years I came also to a point to say okay what comes next um, in kind of, uh, well, um, af after football, what would be my life like? And uh, I wanted to have family too. And at that point, it was clear women's football wasn't as far as it is now to yeah. say you can manage to, to have uh, kids and, um, and be a professional player like we were before because the clubs weren't ready. Maybe national team, we could have managed it. Uh, and also to see, okay, um, I have to prepare for life uh, after and I started so early so it was like a certain feeling inside you feel mm. when it's maybe uh, time to go mm. Mm. Uh, uh, and when you you know talk about women's football and where it is now do you almost feel like you, you wish you would, would be playing <laughs> now do you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah. like do you look at it with envy or with pride uh, uh, with pride because everything has its time you can't change when you were born and you can't change yeah. when you played football and you have to make mm. the best out of it and i think that our generation also contributed to where women's football is now so uh i guess you can tell the same thing like oh wow why, mm. did, why didn't i play it today so for me it's i'm absolutely fine with that and i'm happy to see how it developed and uh, that the stadiums were well they're filled and yeah. that uh, for the big tournaments there's such an interest um, not just in women's football fans, but from uh, all football yeah, fans. Yeah. And I think this is a great uh, development. And I, I was part of that and I'm still part of that in another position now. Yeah. So for me, it's I'm totally fine with that because it doesn't lead to anything. What, what have been the big drivers and the big reasons for changing the women's game for positivity? Well, I think um, for, for Germany, especially was when we had the World Cup in 2011, then... Uh, there was like, we set new standards to say, okay, we want to have a women's World Cup. And for that, we need to change some structures within the, the clubs, within the federation. So uh, the World Cup 2011 was the point where they said, okay, you now ha need to have a, a, a coach who is really just 
a coach and not mm. uh, a teacher uh, and <laughs> whatever and it's working on another job so he's just a coach and we have to have uh, this and those conditions so um, by that we changed the general conditions in women's football in Germany and we uh, set new standards when we had we played in, in Berlin in, in a few stadiums we played uh, the Euros playing now yeah so and we had an wow, exceptional crowd there so it was like this is possible in women's football. We mm. just have to go on. We have to invest in infrastructures and we have to invest in the future of the uh, yeah. of girls playing football. And I think um, we see now where it can lead, but there's still a lot of things to do. Mm. Well, one, one of the things that, that obviously, you know, we mentioned you were fantastic at was scoring goals. Yes. <laughs> During your time as a player, you know, Rio being a, a, a centre back, <laughs> what type of centre back for you did you hate coming up against and which ones did you love coming up against? I'm not quite sure if I would have <laughs> wanted to play against him. Yeah. Uh, but I was kind of player like um, always straightforward. And my first um, intention was always to see, is there any possibility to score now? So where am I? Where are my teammates? And when I get the ball, what is the best next step that mm. we have a great chance to score a goal? So uh, I think within the box, I was quite good <laughs> yeah and uh, out of the box was like okay how do I have to move where do I have to go uh, or where do I have to pass the ball to that we can uh, come in a good position to score and I don't know those there were certain defenders it was tough to play against yeah um, uh, I don't know. It's like uh, physic, like fi like physically. Yeah, or, yeah. Or sometimes like... it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't like it as a striker, but uh, it's part of the if, job. If we, if you looked at the strikers playing today, what who is a striker that plays similarly to you in the men's game and the women's yeah, yeah. game? Yeah. Um, well, um, maybe it's kind of uh, when we go now really high it's like some someone like Holland okay, uh, cool. who's like physical Goal and scorer. has a lot of power and speed uh, yeah. and also like straightforward not doing Direct. so many yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. so maybe uh, more in this direction yeah, well, I like yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, yeah. I do not compare myself. No, to good. Him. I just you say compared yourself. You put yourself there. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Uh, well, I, I loved as well, right? We're obviously, we're within within the men's game, when we see the German national teams when they've won tournaments in the past, that the men's team they've they've gone out. They've it's just non-stop drinking beer. It's going out. <laughs> Rihanna turning up at their parties. Yeah. Uh, for, for the for the women's national teams though, winning trophies. What's the party look like? What What's the aftermath after that? Well, I guess we didn't have Rihanna on our parties, <laughs> but it was fun too because I don't know. I don't know if it's so so uh, different than from the men's game. Of course, yeah. Because uh, the dressing room afterwards was like, I don't know. If, <laughs> champagne <laughs> but, everywhere. Yeah, champagne everywhere. Yeah. Yes, maybe some broken things. <laughs> 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 but no, it was uh, always great. And I had the yeah. luck to play in a time where we often won titles. So yeah. we had a lot of mm. uh, parties. And uh, everyone was uh, was nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah But yeah. without the big stars and the big uh, whatever yeah, around. Business. Because, yeah, yeah. It was just so, pure, so, pure. so you're obviously going to a lot of games. We're speaking yeah. outside. You've, you've visited stadiums and stuff. Who, which teams have impressed you so much in the tournament so far? Uh, well, for sure, I'm happy that Germany made it uh, well with the two two wins now. And um, I have to say this, no team that's so outstanding where I say this, okay, this is now my absolute favorite because they play like, oh my God. But um, I think it will be interesting because we didn't finish now the, the group stage and there's some teams like maybe France or England where you expected maybe a bit more mm. from them in the, in the first matches, but um, they did their job. So mm. uh, France, they won against Austria. England now four points, but they will manage to come to the to the next stage. And I think this is also important for a team to, um, yeah, you, you're not always overperforming and being like fantastic, but you have mm. to manage to do your job to know, okay, we have to go to the knockout stages and, um, yeah, we have to improve maybe in some kind of way. Mm. So I'll be there, relax, because I don't, uh, I can't change anything for the for the uh, sporting uh, matches. But I don't know. The Spanish team was quite good too, mm. and we'll it, see. See, so given that Germany have done so well in the first two games, two good results, um, is this an opportunity now for Nagelsmann to kind of mess about with the team and give other players exposure and minutes? Um, I hope not too much because <laughs> uh, I know from my own experience when you play and you play good and you play the second match, you want to 
just have uh, stay in the flow momentum. You have to, yeah and the momentum and maybe i think so two three positions you could maybe change but the 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 core of the team should stay like it is i don't know how we will handle it because we have uh, three red uh, yellow cards with mm. uh, tar rudiger and andrej in the central position mm. so it may be I don't know how he, he will uh, handle it, but I, I think it's uh, important to, to have a team that can just grow uh, mm. throughout the tournament. But you need to manage to bring in all the players yeah. that you, uh, can be important for the next time. So I think he will stay with the core of the team like he did the, the last games. He was the same starting 11. Maybe now at this time in two or three positions he could change in the uh, maybe for Wirtz, Musiala, uh, just give other players mm. a chance to just um, get some minutes and to feel good. It, it's a fantastic tournament and it's one that, that you were a part of, uh, you know, kind of coming through the stages as well, putting bids into to host a tournament like this. What, what's your, your role now within UEFA as an ambassador? What, what's, what's kind of required of you and, what, and what, what are you getting to do? Okay, well, um, well, I'm the ambassador of the tournament and yeah. together with Philip Lam, yeah. well, uh, where I think we worked for six years for this tournament in 2018. Uh, we knew that we will have the Euro C in Germany and it was like, okay, uh, the Euros are coming and we have to use this tournament, not just in kind of a, a sportive event, mega event where we'll have the best footballers in the, in the world or in Europe here in our country, but we have to uh, manage to uh, give this tournament another value, a social value for, for our country, for Europe. So it was like, uh, okay, uh, this should be a tournament for everybody, a tournament for all. Everyone uh, has to feel being involved, being part of this, mm. and to benefit from this, mm. uh, from this event. And how, how do you how do you get that then? Well, how, how do you how do you make it a tournament uh, yeah. for, for everyone? Uh, a lot of talking for sure yeah. uh, to to the different stakeholders, to politics, to uh, whatever. Um, but also, yeah, to to um, just bring up measures that make sure that everyone can be part. Like uh, in volunteering, we have uh, volunteer tandems where people with disabilities can be a volunteer with someone who doesn't have a disability to just uh, support other people. Or uh, there's a lot of uh, measures we can we can make. So just that people feel that this is uh, not just a tournament of maybe two institutions that come here to a country, make a lot of money and go away and then mm. make the next uh, tournament in another country, but that, um, we should use it because we just talked about that, that there are so many people coming here to our country from so many different mm. uh, countries, different cultures. They're all celebrating this great atmosphere. They get to know each other. They build bridges be between mm -hmm. the cultures, between the countries. And yeah. uh, I think this helps for, for the atmosphere and society in, in Europe as a whole. What, what would be from you know, UEFA's uh, role or, or yourself as an ambassador, what's the, the message that you want to give out to the, the traveling fans from all those yeah. different nations? Well, uh, we should come together and celebrate this game just yeah. like it is, because it's the value of uh, values of football that brings people together. That uh, is about cohesion, about uh, community, and uh, that those kind of things that you experience when you come to a game, to such a tournament where you get to know a lot of other people. Um, it's also important for our everyday life when we go back to our countries, the other people. So to to feel like. Um, uh, we have a good life here in Europe and uh, we should uh, protect those uh, values we have. Yeah. And um, I think it's much easier to to feel that when you have a, a euro instead of trying to to convince people that it is good just to experience how it is to meet other people from different cultures, to have fun, to cheer your team uh, on your team. And um, as long as everything mm. is peaceful and everything is respectful, then uh, cheer for your team Take off your jersey. I don't know. Yeah. Dance on the street. <laughs> dance on the street. Do He's whatever been doing that. He's yeah, been doing yeah, that. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Exactly, yeah. uh, dance on the street, but just um, yeah, be happy and uh, enjoy this game. And this is the the magic of the game. I think. Mm. Yeah, it's a fantastic message. Inclusivity is is yeah. a, a big word for this. Because you you walk around, you see everybody feels like they're involved. Every, there's no people sometimes you get people who might stand on the edge, don't feel like they can be part. Mm. Everyone's bringing each other in, and I think the fanfare here, I've loved. Well, you know, you know, the the, the colours in in all of yeah. that ring around is the colour of every single um, every single country that has been represented mm. uh, it is represented in those colours, yeah, right? Yeah. That's that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah, that, that's the whole idea behind it, and we're trying to not just to say, okay, we have one measure for inclusivity, and that's it. But it's a topic that goes through every decision mm. you have to do, through every 
um, yeah, the, the the way you think about the tournament, the way you organize the tournament, you always have to have that in mind and to, mm. to reflect, is this really what we want? And uh, I think the, the logo reflected very good. Well, we thought we'd include you uh, in something that we've been doing, which is our nine dart challenge. Right? Yes. You took this on. <laughs> Here is how Celia got on. Right, nine darts. Nine. 19. That's a six, Rio. Oh, is it? Okay, 16. <laughs> 23. 23. 23. 13, good. Oh! No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. 12, I think. Yeah, it is in the 12. Okay. 23, 23. plus 629. 13, 12, and 6. 54, let's go. Okay. 13, good. 16, good. Ten. Ninety-three in total. Wow, okay, you're up there on leaderboard. Well done. Okay. I think you could be in the lead. <laughs> I think you're in the lead. <laughs> yeah. I think you're in the lead there. Well right. done, well done. Right. Okay. Take us in there. Celia, top of the leaderboard. I mean, you, uh, you're up there. <laughs> uh, it, I didn't expect it. Yeah, well, really. look, you're on 93. <laughs> Sam Kadira's on 92. Then I have to put my hands up because I made a mistake. Horrendous uh, maths. Well, bad maths, but also one of the most intimidating blokes I've ever met in Fabio Capello. <laughs> uh, we told him he got 87. He actually got 82. Um, Rio, sorry. I'm at the bottom. You know what? I, you, you can't host these type of things and... and be top all the time. You know what I mean? You've got to just sometimes sub subdue your. Oh, you're ego. looking at it upside down. It's a good host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving confidence to the guests. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Celia, there is also something in front of you. Yeah. Which is our which is our big wheel. It's Rio's big wheel, right? Yes. The I'm afraid of big. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there, there's a couple of things on here. The if the wheel lands on, you're gonna have to do. Is there anything that you don't want it to land on? So we've got it doing an impression. Doing an impression of somebody. Side, worst habit, worst trainer, last photo in your phone. Uh, weirdest superstition. Celebrity crush. Maybe worst habit is maybe. Oh, yeah. You don't need to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let, maybe we might need to know. So let's good spin. Okay. Give it a good spin. There we go. Good spin. I think that's been the best spin. spin so far. Best spin so far. Let's have a see. Where are we going? We are going to. Weirdest superstition. Okay, all right. So, so this is kind of leading into uh, any superstitions like on the pitch, right? So before a match, was there anything that you ever had to do and you did this the same way every time? Uh, or did you have a teammate that you saw one and you were like, that is crazy. strange. Okay. Then I have to... Me, I, I wasn't so superstitious because I thought maybe uh, I didn't want to have anything to to claim on after what to say because of that I, yeah. I lost or because of that I won it was because I played good or I played played uh, bad but uh, well there were a lot of players uh, that had some superstition but I, I have to think about it did what? you did you have any rare? yeah I used to always have a cup of coffee in the change room always had a Red Bull and always had a bottle of water on the way out just as I was going out of the change room pour the water on my head Okay, but Crazy. but now now I I just uh, remember that um, when I once had my boots on, I didn't want to take them off again because it was not a superstition, but it was like when you have the feeling inside and it's the boot becomes part of your body. Yeah. And after after warm up, uh, you need maybe you, got to, you need the tape or whatever to do to change. I didn't want to take my boots off because this made me feel like mm. no, this is now part of me and it's I need, it, I need it for, for the game and I don't want to change anything so so just even if you needed strapping you wouldn't take uh, it off sometimes I did but it went wrong yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a superstition I like that I like that one I, I quite Should like do that. one more yeah do one more go yeah on yeah, one yeah. More. okay so you just want to hear my yeah. head <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know let's go <laughs> okay we're going for worst oh. habit <laughs> 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 you got there okay um my worst habit. She's gone red. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have to think about what I can, uh, what I can tell you. Um, this can either be what your teammates would say is your worst habit, or even your friends and family. Okay, well, for some it's worse, but for some it's not. I talk a lot, and I talk often, and I talk loud in the bus. I was always we were sitting in the back, and sometimes we made jokes in the back yeah. and the front the, the coaches in the front they were laughing because I was making a joke <laughs> behind so oh, it was okay. so loud and so uh, yeah so you was the big voice in the change room on the bus much. yeah 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to talk and I like to talk to people, to my teammates, and uh, I always had a good time in the dressing room. So, uh, yeah, maybe this is kind of uh, what people will remember from me. But uh, this is worst habit was making too many jokes, basically. Uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm not to 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 make too many jokes. I'm just. Uh, make, making my comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it how it was. I like that. Don't yeah. worry. Um, well, look, thank you so much mm. uh, for, for being a part of this today, Celia. Um, before you go, we've got to do some predictions. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to go with, with three here. So let's let's say, let's go. Who do you think at the end of the tournament, top goal scorer? Oof. When I see the first matches, there's... Wow. I don't know. Maybe then I go with with German with the German guy who already scored twice. Yeah, <laughs> sure, Musiala. Musiala, why not? Okay, Musiala, player of the tournament. Player of the tournament. Oh, fu, 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 fu. let me say I'll I'll stay with the German. I'll say oh, yeah. Gundogan. Gundogan. Okay. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Good player. Winner of the tournament. Winner of the tournament. <sighs> German. I would, lo I would love, to, yeah. German, yeah. 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 I love to, see, to see the Germans, but uh, I think France is still the strong. What is so so mm. so strong? I don't know. When you see the the bench of the French team, you could make a, a starting team. eleven yeah, for yeah. for every to other, win it. They yeah, could yeah, win yeah, it. Yeah, to, uh, for every other nation. So uh, my 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 wish is to have uh, France against uh, Germany in the final because I'm half Fr French. So yeah. For me, it will be fine. <laughs> perfect, yeah. perfect. I hope she's wrong. Celia, thank you so much for being a part of Legends Lounge. Celia Sazic. Welcome. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you.